And welcome to this video. My name is Janis and I want to share with you how we can create some minimal techno song with a performer and all we use is the performer in live mode. So there's no overdubbing, no separate recording. Everything is going to happen inside the machine at once. And it's a pretty minimalist approach, but I find it super enjoyable also because it has a kind of hypnotic rhythmical touch. And let's quickly listen to it. This is actually a composition of my new record called Morning Cycles, which you're warmly invited to listen to because it has been made entirely with a performer. It's basically a collection of live tracks made with a performer in some minimalist setting. It was super inspiring and I enjoyed the process so much that I thought it could actually be some cool video series to speak a little about sound design and also about composing with a performer. So this is actually part three. There were two videos on sound design already and now I want to share three videos on making music with a performer. I'm using Syntact here for sequencing only, so I'm not going to use any Syntact sounds. It's just my MIDI sequencer here. You could just as well use Ableton Live or another sequencer. Actually, when I recorded this song, I also used Ableton Live, but I thought it's actually more fun with Syntact, which I bought a couple of weeks after I actually recorded all the songs. And the whole composition only has basically two parts later, also a third part, which I will show you, but the main part is actually just the kick drum, which here I have on track two. It's sending MIDI to, MIDI to channel 2, so this, oscill uh, this oscillator 4 is receiving the MIDI from that track and you can see it's just a kick drum sound, just a sine wave with some pitch envelope. And in my first sound design tutorial I also speak about making drum sounds in case you're interested, but it's a fairly basic setting, so let's mute the first part and just listen to the kick drum. Pretty low, pretty deep. And somehow I really enjoy making drum sounds on the performer. They are fairly basic, but that's what I like about them. They are kind of charismatic through their basic character or their kind of rudimentary sound. Quite direct also. They don't sound so playful. They are just there right away, which is something I kind of enjoy. But that's just the kick drum. And then there's also some sequence. And as you could see, maybe in this little preview, I was using three oscillators for one sequence. But for now, let's just check out how the sequence gets created because it contains a tiny rhythm trick. So on Syntact, I have the sequence on track one and it sends MIDI to channel one. So if I check MIDI channel one, you see that those three oscillators receive the signal. For now, I keep it on M1 so we can listen to the sequence just through one oscillator, which is some basic square wave sound with a tiny bit of pulse width modulation, but on a high sine wave LFO speed. It adds a bit of the distorted character, which is really nice. And for the sequence, I use a group of five, which is something I really like to have the kind of static four on the floor kick drum and then to use some odd group of notes on top of it, for example, five. So inside the sequence, I'm just going to draw five notes and also under a function and page, I want to reduce the length for now to five steps. So after those five steps, although we're in a 4-4 bar, it goes back to the beginning and we create this interesting overlap. And also on the right side, you see I switched the maximum length to infinite, which makes sure that it never reassigns the sequence to the one. So it's free floating in this group of five, which is super cool. And also inside Ableton Live, you can simply repeat a group of five notes, or I guess with whatever sequencer you use, you just select a group of five and then you select the setting that it constantly repeats itself. And then you can be fairly spontaneous about finding cool notes. So I, for example, used B two times because the whole sequence is based on a melodic minor mode, actually harmonic minor, and I think actually it was B5 on the first two positions. Then I keep it on C, then it's going to be G sharp and the high E, actually E6. And then we get this kind of sequence. <laughs> Just with one oscillator, it sounds pretty cool. Just for the distortion, as you can see, I mentioned it already, the pulse width modulation. It's actually a very nice effect because if I take it away, it sounds a bit boring. And here we get this nice type of distortion. But now it gets more interesting if I bring in the other two oscillators and I already applied the same setting to them as for the first oscillator, I mean roughly. 
it's quickly to perfectly match them, but that's also the beauty about the performer. And then I'm going to switch to P1 mode. Could also be M2, but actually P1 is better because later I add something where we actually need the P1 mode because on P1 it can still trigger polyphonic oscillators like two or three at the same time, while M2 only can trigger one oscillator at a time. And now it will distribute the sequence through those oscillators. So it will trigger the first one, the second note will trigger the second one, the third, the third one, and then it kind of circles around. And here it's also great to use a group of three because three is also some uneven number, which means if you mute oscillators, which is what I actually do in the intro, you get some even more interesting rhythmic patterns because you create a group of five and then again groups of three. And I want to show you what this means. So first of all, if all <laughs> notes are enabled, it sounds like this. Also, you see that I use some panning. But setting up the sequence like this allows you to start your composition with a lot of tension because if you mute the kick drum and also mute two oscillators, you only have here this first one while it still moves through those oscillators without triggering them or actually without being audible. And then you get those types of rhythmic patterns. hear it almost as some slower 5-8 or 5-4 figure. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Already here it sounds quite interesting to bring in the kick drum because it's some sort of sensation also for the listener because I think the listener will not expect a 4 on the floor kick drum if the song starts like this. Also before you can bring in the other oscillators, positively confusing the listener. This almost sounds like some swing, some shuffle. And the third one resolves the rhythm, but at this point you don't expect the third one come in or actually it brings in a rhythm that you don't hear at all and it shifts around the whole feeling then you can bring in the kick drum again If you want to see some more of those rhythm tricks, I'm going to link you some video here that I shared some weeks ago about five rhythm tricks that can always make your music more exciting. It totally works to just use those five notes. I mean, you can keep it interesting through modulating the sound or through muting those individual oscillators. However, you can also consider adding some variation inside the sequence, which is actually something I did. And I basically made the sequence longer. I still kept the repetition of five, but I want this sequence to repeat six times in this way and then there's actually a variation where one note changes that I also want to repeat for six times. Which means we have six times five which is 30 and again six times five with the alternate version which is 60. So the overall length we're going to change to 60 and if it sounds too complicated you'll uh, see in a second what I mean. So here we have 60 steps. So now we perform this move where we press down all those five triggers and press copy. And inside the door you can basically duplicate this figure and then we paste it here and here and here and here and here. So we have it six times. We paste it once more but this time we add some variation to the C because the C is our lowest note and I change it to D. And that's something I found out recently that this is a super cool sequence variation because if you repeat the same cycle a couple of times but then change the lowest note, the lowest note sounds like some sort of bass note, especially in a scenario where you only have a kick and not like some additional bass sound. It adds a lot of movement to your music and you'll see in a second how it actually sounds like. But um, we... Oh, now it's a bit difficult to insert those steps because they are on two pages. Let's actually here insert the same figure and change the C again to a D and then we can actually copy it a couple of more times.
Here we see that we have four steps left, which is perfect because we wanted to create some 60 step sequence. If you fill up all banks, you have 64. And let's now listen to it and just listen for this lowest note, how it changes from C to D. I mean, you don't have to recognize it's a change from C to D, but just for the movement, I feel like it makes the sequence way more interesting now. Also, if you mute two oscillators and create this one oscillator melody, like a slow group of five, it also sounds more interesting because it will also include this change. Now. And I basically start the whole song like this. I only have one oscillator, slowly bring in the other two like I've shown you and then bring in the kick drum. And then this keeps playing for a while. And then there's one more element, which is also bringing us to the point why I used P1. Because in P1, you can still send MIDI on the same channel, but other MIDI notes and for a short amount of time create some overlap or some polyphony. And let's actually use track three here. Uh, did I set this up already? Yeah, so it's um, sending to channel one. And I just programmed a little sequence that is um, having some higher pitched notes. And this one can be just a group of five because it's basically one cycle that only has one note. And if you go now to the sequence menu, we can simply program one note and tune this higher. I used E, G and B. So let's actually use some um, E7, since it needs to be one octave higher at least compared to the sequence we already have. And now we add some occasional note every five steps that gets played with whoever, whatever synthesizer is free. And it's really loud as you can see, so let's bring down the velocity. interesting that it's always on the left side. I'm not able right now to figure out the math, but there will be actually some mathematical explanation for that. But this is cool, but it sounds super static if you leave it in all the time. And this is basically some option because I did the same with track four, which also um, sends MIDI to channel one. I guess it still has a sequence from something I did before. So again, selecting five notes. And this time, instead of using the the E7, let's use the G7 and put it on the second position because this way we also add some more variations so all those notes are actually not on the same position when they start because I'm going to enable and disable them live. So just as some example, let me check if this is on. So let's say those two are muted. So we have this rhythm. And then sometimes you bring in, for example, the E play a little and then you bring in the G. So this is almost like some live element where you can bring them in, take them out, however you feel in the moment. And this is also something I like because this type of music can be a bit static. I mean, it's also super hypnotic and it's part of it, but I always enjoy having those things that you can bring in spontaneously. And that's actually a cool example. And if you have Ableton, you can also use some Launchpad, for example, for simply triggering a clip with the E and then triggering a clip with the G and so on. And for track five, I have the B7. Actually, since it's only one note, we can perfectly uh, globally change that note. Again, make it a five step sequence and this time putting it on the third position. So we have those three notes. And actually, let's see how this sounds like. And 
so you get some kind of simple structure for making a track. You just start with one oscillator, then you slowly reveal the rhythm, but you can really take your time. Bring in the kick drum, let it play a little, bring in those occasional extra notes for keeping it a bit, a bit interesting and also adding the live element. And then at some point you basically end the piece how you started it by taking out some of the oscillators or also what is fun to change the octaves and that's maybe the last thing I want to share with you and by the way you can listen to the first track of Morning Cycles it's called Mornix and yeah see if you can recognize the structure and let's actually check how to get out of it. swing type feel that you remember from the intro. When I was recording this I didn't have the syntax yet which would have been fun because of the probability knob. Because in Ableton you can also change the probability but you simply don't have this one knob or this one function that you can map to a knob from a MIDI controller that simply lets you change the probability with this one knob. And I'm actually kind of curious now to see how this affects the sequence. Let's check it. So you can actually create some space. Also a great way of adding variation in the middle of the song, for example. Probably also cool if you mute some oscillators. Let's change the octave again. Thanks a lot for watching. I really hope you have some fun exploring this approach with your own sequences or maybe some other sounds on the performer. And again, warm invitation to check out Morning Cycles. The link is down below in the description. And be known that if you buy it on Bandcamp, you actually get twice as many songs because there were quite some B-sides and I felt like five are like some more curated album, but there are five more tracks that are maybe a little more experimental. I think they are also quite cool. And also this would be a sweet little way of saying thank you for this little video series if you feel like and enjoyed it. So warm invitation to check that out. Apart from that, I wish you lots of inspiration with whatever it is that you create and hope to see you soon again at this channel. Bye.